Hey everybody, this is Lauren Hart from Once Human. And Logan Mader from Once Human. Thanks for joining us on Interview Under Fire. All right, everyone, welcome once again to a brand new episode of Interview Under Fire. This is your beloved host, the one and only Sonny here today. And I have the honor of speaking with two immensely talented individuals of Lauren Hart, and Logan Mater, thank you both for joining our IUF series today. You know, this is an exciting week here for you and the rest of the crew over at Once Human with the drop of your latest album, Scar Weaver, which is set to unleash February 11th via Ear Music. Let me begin by congratulating you all, like all the well-deserved reactions. I mean, this has been getting so far, especially with those singles, uh, Deadlock that features Rob Flynn, Erasure, Only in Death, Cold Arrival. I mean, there's just so much to discover about this jawbreaker of an album and who you're all about but before we get to all that i know we kind of briefly discussed it before the interview started i think this is a good question to kick things off how are you considering how we're all just collectively coming back out into the normality here again in the states after two years two years i mean does it feel like everything kind of just went by in a blink at the same time i feel like uh we time traveled in a way and like 2021 really didn't happen just because it didn't really happen it feels like <laughs> right. i keep thinking, oh wait last year that was 2020 wait a minute no it's, we're already in 2022 it's a little bit weird but it's starting to get you know to some kind of normal anyway which is nice but we did we actually went on tour a couple months ago so we did get to go back out for the first time since the end of the world and that was awesome we went out with cradle of filth in north america yeah. and it was amazing to get back out there and do what we love so we did october all through october in, in the states and and you know obviously life as a late many of us are finally beginning to return to the stage right fans and musicians alike and uh, that cradle of filter i uh, that cradle of filter i was i was drawing a brain fart when i when we first were talking when i was like i was at that show i actually did photography for you guys in dallas and you guys knocked it out of the park you know what i was oh, hearing? you're at the first show yeah yeah so so here's the thing um uh, after that show i don't know if you guys heard that the buzz was did you guys see that uh, that one band that had the girl in front. I'm like, yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. That the presence that you guys put on stage, you know, the thing that makes once human, once human is the live energy that you guys put on stage. And it was just, I, I know returning to the stage is one thing, Lauren and Logan, but after almost two years, are you guys still feeling like the after effects of that tour, considering how long, how much of a gap it was? Did you have to kind of like, okay, what do I do about soundcheck? I got to get, get back in the groove. Lauren, like how, how did you... You know, it's first show. Like I, I gotta ask about that. The nerves. First like, shows, are first, shows are, first shows are always weird. No matter how big the gap is, you know, it's always a little bit rocky, a little bit of everyone's figuring things out. And you know, I, I know we played some songs on that set with, with that you saw us but that we didn't yeah. play again. It was like, we're not doing that again, you know? <laughs> so it's like a little bit, the first show is always a little bit of trial and error and there's a lot of, you know, chaos going around all the bands, you know? Um, but uh, it felt like as soon as we were on stage, it felt right. It felt like I was home again. Um, I, I feel like those two years of nothingness didn't happen when I was on stage. It was crazy. It was right. almost like, you know, when you, when you see a friend that you haven't seen in forever and like things just pick up right where they left off, you know, because yeah, yeah it, it was like that in a way for me anyway. Um, I don't know if you want to add to that. Yeah, it was, that was the first time we played since January, 2020. So, you know, there's a little rust. It, it's more in our heads. I think, I don't think people notice it, but we feel it hmm. after it's not been rep repetitive, uh, you know, like after a week into a tour, it's all like, yeah, this is, like you know, the routine yeah. gets set yeah 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 and and you know with once human i know you guys uh, let me tell you how i discovered you guys i was in uh <laughs> i love this story i was dying to tell you this guys for the longest time before i was able to get you on my show uh i was on i was in line to see gojira and one of my best friends adam shout out to him we were waiting for like the vip right this is before my publication kicked off this was like 2016 2015 and they were coming here for a show and then we were waiting in line. And he's like, "Hey, dude, you need to check out this band." And he's got this. It's got this girl, girl, and she's she's an she sounds like Corpse Grinder. I, I'm sure you heard that before. We just Lauren. Did, like actually. it's just like, <laughs> and that's the first thing he told me. I'm like, "Wait, I gotta see this." And I, and then I was like, "Wait, he used to be in Machine Head." And I'm a big fan of Machine. Head. I grew up with Machine Head, you know, Logan. So 
So that meant even much more seeing what you guys have been on. And then I forgot what the song was. It was a music video. It was a white room. Uh, if, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Yeah, I have that, chaos. That would have been that. That's what that was, and he showed me that music video. And from then, it was just, it was kind of just all gas and no brakes, especially from since I first follow you from like 2015. But you what? both have been at this for a while, and Logan, this goes back for you in the early 90s with, you know, Machine Head and, and Mashiach and Soulfly. I mean, the list goes on for you, Lauren. Shout out to Camelot for <laughs> for your your work. Have you? <laughs> Lauren, uh, shout, nothing shout, but love for them. Yeah, and uh, shout out for uh, the work you've done with Camelot. And I've had I had the privilege to speak with Tommy Karavik on the show not too long long ago. But would you say you both have a newfound appreciation of the live touring, the live concert experience? Looking back, would you say that that's a fair statement? Uh, hmm. Loaded question, I know. Well, yeah, I mean, it's like. <laughs> I want everyone to be back on tour, all of yeah. us. That's normal. That's what I've experienced my whole life. You know, the, to not be able to go on tour, that's not normal. We just, you know, mm -hmm. it's time to get back to grinding and doing what we do. Um, and yeah, you don't know what you got till it's gone, I guess. So you can appreciate it a little more when it gets like yanked away from you. And you're like, wait a minute. <laughs> but yeah, so it's good to be back. Yeah, and that's when I feel like I'm truly home is when I'm on the road. It's weird. It's like waking up in a new place every day. And that's when I feel like I'm home. It's so strange mm -hmm. to me. Yeah. And I was at a show every week before the lockdown began. So it was, you know, getting back into it, you know, as a fan, you know, it's, it's kind of just, we're all connected in this sort of like realm that no other person can actually, they, they don't know. It's something that's from the inside. And it was really good to see, to do what you guys do. Now, obviously staying busy during the pandemic was an important thing, right? But aside from the music, I, I love this question. Now that it's been two years, it's been the commonality of this conversation here. Has that time opened up new things for you both personally or even just artistically that you may have not discovered before about yourself? Like, okay, I can actually take this forward with me after all this is over. Like, dude, guys, I took up baking like the first couple of months. I never baked cookies and now I know how to bake. <laughs> so I don't know. So what stood out the most for you guys aside from the music? Well, if, uh if anything did. Aside from the music, I wanted to say something about the music because uh, just we'll, we'll go back to that. But yeah, yeah, of course. Music, I do not think this is one of the things that helped me restore like hope in everything in life, in the universe. And that is when Rob said yes to doing Deadlock, I don't think that would have happened if it wasn't for the world being you know shut down and everything like that because he wouldn't have had the time. So in, in that, when he said yes to doing that, mm -hmm. it was like in a time where I, there was no light at the end of the tunnel, everything mm -hmm. was black. Uh, there was no touring. Everyone was, no one was releasing albums and everything just looked, everyone was like, what do we do? You know? And I just felt so down. And then when he said, yes, it was like, it was like my whole faith in humanity restored, you know, like, so that came at a, a really cool time. And, and now that song is really, uh, close to my heart because it, it tells me every time I listen to it that good things can happen in the worst case scenarios so but besides the music I don't know I've, I've been learning a lot of German um <laughs> and uh what else what else have we done well it, it gave us having that time extra time gave us more time to be super perfectionist about the album and her uh -huh. writing her top lines and rewriting and really really not settling and giving this <clears throat> new album Scar Weaver everything that it deserves to be the best that it can be. So there was that because we were going to release an album in 2020 that wasn't finished at the time, but then everything happened. We pushed it back and it kept like moving the goalposts. Right. And moving it. so it, you know, it gave us extra luxury time to work on this album, which is, you know, it turned out really amazing in the end. So that's cool. Even though, you know, <laughs> well, well, you also yeah. started a new business. Well, yeah, and I have survival instincts. So like all of a sudden the music industry stops. And I, so I got into the cannabis industry. I created a new uh, nutrition. Oh, hell yeah. Company. Yeah. So I'm the new West Coast brand ambassador for 22 Red Cannabis brand, which is a brown, uh, brand founded by Shaba Odajian from System of a Down. It's been Dude. around a few years. It's a cool See? lifestyle brand and it's a really fun space to be in. I, I enjoy it a lot. So there's, there's that came out of it. And uh, I'm st so I'm still doing that full steam now, along with the musical Paul music thing. So yeah, see, keep keep okay. doing that. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. I, I wanted to just add to that, but well, go ahead. 
it's just another thing with, you know, some good came out of it and taking a negative situation and not letting it beat you down and not becoming a victim, but realizing what can I do? What mm -hmm. can I do given these weird circumstances? And so that's what we did. We did what we could. And, and, you know, you mentioned that, uh, how it kind of is like a hi. So my dog is out on this side of this other door. So it, I have it closed because it sounds like I'm like yelling. So he would be trying to get in every time when I have these interviews. So, oh, yeah. um, so I'm going to give you a picture here. Actually, it's, it's right here. Uh, this is, this is, this is my dog rocket. He's a hi, Austra rocket. Australian cattle dog. He's outside this door right now. <laughs> anyway, all the pets, all the animals, the better. And let's get to that new album. You know, the third album, right? Scar Weaver drops this Friday on ear music. Uh, I want to repeat the words here, guys, you know, third album before we get into the nitty gritty of Scar Weaver, because it's the follow up to 2017's Evolution. And that was just another solid effort through and through. I mean, I mean, five years later, guys, I mean, don't call it a comeback. I hope you both know that you won up yourselves here, Logan, with your compositions and musicianship and, and Lauren, good God, you went above and beyond with your vocals. I mean, <laughs> one thing I will say is not listening to this in the nighttime in the darkness, because I mean, as far as like horror movies, I grew up on horror movies. So it, it was just like, I was like, okay, now it's like scary, in a, but in a good scary way. And I want to give a shout out to your bandmates, Dalian, uh, Damien, Dylan, and Max, because one thing I heard between all of you guys on this record was the chemistry. So I got to ask, was there any such thing as pressure for you and the rest of the guys for when you decided to sit down and write again for a new album or even just a follow up, considering we are past that debut. We are past that sophomore slump we so often hear, right? And here's the third album. Did you feel pressure? Or was it, like, you know what? Fuck it. We got those out of the way. We're going to do what we're going to do. Yeah, I don't. Okay, I don't tend to feel, but I, I, I don't mind pressure, whether it's, it's often in my life there's pressure. But spoiler alert, I went out on tour with Machine Head during the Burn My Eyes anniversary tour and Max Karen, our guitar player, spent that time writing 10 amazing songs. And when I came home, they were done and I yeah. didn't need anything. They were like perfect and I didn't want to touch them. They were not broken, so I didn't need to fix them. So Max wrote all the, this instrumental music when I was out on tour and that's what, it, there it is. I didn't, you know, I didn't write any of it. <laughs> you know, but I sh shout out to him though. Yeah, well, he's I, amazing. He he's also like, worked closely with Dylan as well. Oh yeah, that's right. Dylan was involved a lot, a lot of that too, our drummer. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm the producer and I work with Lauren pr producing her vocals and I do the mixing and stuff. And I, you know, play guitar in the band and I tour manage and I'm the merch girl sometimes as well, or <laughs> merch dude. A lot of hats, uh, yeah, yeah. Everybody yeah. needs a merch girl, all right? So you're, yeah. you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I identify as all of these things. And uh, <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, in this case, there's, you know, Max just stepped up. We, we uh, told him, we want you to be you go. Cause he's mm -hmm. an amazing songwriter. His musical mind is really unique. And he has this approach to riffs. That's just very, very Max like, and it's like a super unique to Max. And we really wanted him to feel like, go for it. And he did, he really did. And I'm, I'm really happy with what he yeah. did. And um, so Lauren Lauren Johnson with writing all her top lines at that point. Uh, yeah. Lawrence, side note, what's what's your cat's name? I didn't even ask. <laughs> His name is Buddy. We, Bunny. We also okay. Have Buddy, Buddy. Buddy. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I didn't even ask. I was like, oh, wait, did, did she name this? Did we have a name for that cat? Hey, well, hi, Buddy. I know you're on camera, but uh, shout out to Buddy if he's still around. <laughs> now, um, uh, now I got to get this out there because from tracks like uh, the first track, Adelon, to the title track, to Razor, to We Ride, all the way to Only in Death. Guys, this is quite the offering because you guys, uh, at least from my perspective, you actually pushed the boundaries and gave the genres of, of groove, metalcore, even melodic death metal, a breath of fresh air with a modernized twist of everything that you guys are. Considering we're seeing all these bands kind of just sort of crowded together within these subgenres, you know, trying to make it into the scene, it really makes Once Human stand out. Uh, for me. I mean, there's a reason why you guys are where you're at. And Logan, I'm going to quote you here. You know, you said we're, where we're at now is with a really strong posture and by far the best album we've done. So walk me through this. How much did things change from when you first started composing on Scar Weaver to where you ended up finishing it? Did you guys already have a specific sound in mind or did it kind of just evolve into what it is today? I don't, I feel like the pandemic kind of helped with that too, as well. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, so 
for, on the musical side of it, it was just like push the boundaries for the heavy, brutal parts to just get completely disgusting and just almost like totally just wrong. So fucked up. And then on the beautiful, beautiful melodic side of things get all the way over there. So there's a, a broadened spectrum of dark to light on the album, I guess, mm-hmm. in a musical uh, sense. And then Lauren really stepped up with her newfound characters and she's evolved over the years and also touring with Kamala and working with people like Melissa Cross. She's discovered new characters that she can do with a lot of conviction and believable power with her, you know, halfway dirty, halfway melodic, new powerful singing voice and her clean singing voice is better now and her growls are even more brutal. So a lot of the evolution of this album, post evolution is, is, uh, you know, displayed with Lauren's new abilities. So. Yeah, expanded expanded vocal range. Lauren, did you want to add anything to that? Oh, I, I, because I wonder about the challenges for a vocalist like yourself. Like, was it? This, I got to I got to start singing now. You know, that was I, I, that was a whole new step for you. That well, I didn't have to do anything. I chose to do that. Um, but the, there was a lot of challenges with writing over Max's riffs and and. Hmm. And I thought that maybe screaming over a lot of these things, uh, a lot of these riffs was kind of like an easy way out. And um, I wanted to really find a melody to weave in between his and, and Max picks his really dissonant chords and, and his, his melodies, the time, the timing's really weird. So it was like every little part was like solving an algebra equation. And I would get stuck sometimes on trying to find a melody that like perfectly goes like, yeah. um, like bottom feeder, the beginning of bottom feeder. Um, that was tough. And um, only in death was really tough that chorus. And uh, you know, parts like that where there's like, a lot of stuff going on underneath and then these these leads that basically sing by themselves you know um i would spend a lot of time trying to figure it out and when i did figure it out it felt like i solved this like huge, yeah and i felt so good and um and i wanted to keep doing that i guess it was sort of like a little high for me in the in a way it was like just figuring it out but also um with the vocal um changes how i have like this raspy clean um i discovered that through camelot um i think before camelot i was afraid to belt uh i was afraid to sing loudly because i was still unsure whether or not i was a good singer in general i was uh i was a little bit unsure of myself and then doing it every day with camelot i uh i you know you can't be shy anymore you have to really Mm -hmm. put yourself out there um, and I found that with the raspy sort of cleans, it was easier for me to transition out of screams into cleans when I still had a little bit of grit. So I guess that's why I'm, I'm doing it all over this, this album. It's also uh, a lot easier for me to do live, you know, when you switch. From yeah. the, it's just, it feels like you're kind of using the same momentum. Um, but yeah, working with Melissa Cross really helped me and, uh, yeah, well, I think that's that's all pretty much it, you know. Yeah, and and you know the uh, I also want to add because the sound itself was a big part of this record that I really loved. Like, guys, I'm an audiophile these days. I'm very picky on how I want my music to sound, the way I want it to sound, and top to bottom. Not only is this your best sounding record, but it's also your best sounding record, if you know what I mean. You know, between like producing, mixing, and mastering. Logan, I know you have an extensive producing background. You know, tell me more about this. Is this something that you played a big part in did you get a team in to work on this aspect of the record yeah i did uh i did the uh production and mixing and max was involved in the tracking and max karen was involved in helping with the tracking and with some of the mixing and stuff and then he Mm -hmm. did the mastering so there was a collaboration on of me and max on that one with uh, all the tones and all the mixing and yeah i feel like it, it uh it really works it's got a thing about it that works really well together, all of it. And between writing and structuring the songs and the production process, like we just talked about, you know, the lyricism throughout Scar Weaver, I kind of want to dive into this because the bulk of it centers around topics like pain and trauma and, and darkness, especially at a time like today, right? I feel like we would all really resonate with that. Lauren, you mentioned how kind of the energy of the world at that time, or technically right now, it helped you write these lyrics, right? Like Deadlock is the most personal song on the album for you. So I begin to think about the tangibles uh, on a theme 
to this album? Is there one? Was that a big component to once human songwriting on Scarweaver? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, Deadlock was not really the most personal song. Um, that one, that one's uh, more just, uh, that was written definitely in the time of when uh, the media, like the media mind control was the, was the mm, theme yeah. for that. And, and everything that I wrote on that song um, is what I'm singing. And then everything Rob wrote on, on uh, everything Rob sings, he wrote, you know, so it was a nice collaborative effort there. The most, uh, per the most personal song would probably be uh, Only in Death um, and Cold Arrival being um, coping with death because we lost a friend in 2020. Um, so that really hit home with me. And I did a lot of grieving through that song, mm -hmm. all the stages of grief. Um, you can really hear and, and see it in the lyrics, you know, and then Erasure covers the, the topic of, you know, blood diamonds, which um, I didn't know what that meant until I forced myself to watch and read things that I wish I could unsee, but, uh, you know, it affected me and I felt like I had to write about it because these things still happen in the world today. And uh, with Scar Weaver, that very much, the, the title uh, track, very much deals with my anxiety issues and my uh, catastrophic thinking. And um, the the line in the song is Scar Weaver, so the flesh on my fears. So yeah. you have these thoughts that only exist in your mind, but you give it energy and you breathe life into it and you make it real. And um, it just engulfs you, you know? So that's what that, that song's about. So yeah, it's at various, various topics in, uh, in evolution, the album, I felt like the lyrics were a lot more triumphant and uh, a lot more like positive and feel good, but I could not for the life of me write like that this time. And I think that's definitely shaped from the world and uh, just having to be honest. It's important to be honest with yourself and how you're feeling in the moment. So yeah, yeah. thanks for reading the lyrics. No, yeah. I, and now that was a really big part that stood out. I mean, so much stood out on this on this album. And I think I see a cameo by Buddy behind you. Um, now mm -hmm. from, you know, you know, from the different experiences and perspectives in each of your timelines that you have taken in, which we have discussed about right and, and performing for as long as you have and the people you have met and work with during these records i mean including including the touring life the relationship with your bandmates and each other and once human you know was simply was supposed to be just this passion project from the start and here you are and kind of just leading this heavy metal community into this blistering third record i mean this is definitely something you both have a passion for and the truth is as for what i'm saying you've experienced plenty already in in your career and I'm excited for your futures. Have your aspirations as people or hell, or even just a band, have they collectively changed or evolved since when you first started performing in the industry? Like, do you guys see things differently today? Well, I've been, I've been doing this for 25 years. So yeah, I see things differently today. It's just as a, as a yeah. human, you know, it's a, a whole an entire generation of life, you know, but, uh, there's a big part of why I do music and why I love music that was there with me when I was 21, when I joined Machine Head and it's still there with me now. And yeah, it's, I don't think it's something that ever leaves you. It's like, it's in me, it's part of me. And my passion for it is always, my love for it is always, is always there, you know? And I love touring to be in motion and I feel very at home on tour, like, like Lauren as well, the whole part of it as well. Like the creative process is something that I love so much that I became a producer. You know, I, I remember being in Machine Head back in the day and being in the studio and writing music and recording was a big part of, it was like half of being in a band to me. I loved it as much as I loved being on tour. And so around early 2000s, I started to become a producer and I have yeah. you know, worked with a bunch of amazing bands like Gojira and Five Finger Death Punch and, you know, Fair Factory, Devil Driver. Logan, you work with everyone and, uh, uh, and much appreciation to everything you've done throughout your career. So uh, real, yeah. quick, real quick fact, my first Machine Head record was uh, The Burning Red. I don't know how many times you hear that, but that's actually that was actually that got me into Machine Head. <laughs> I know that's like kind of like uh, the fans are divided with that album, but I love, absolutely love everything about The Burning Red because it came out at a time where the genre that was breaking out was like new metal and you guys really took it to the core. And I think that was after your time with Machine Head or maybe right around during yeah, the last years. I wasn't going to say anything, but it was right. It was right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The first two albums. And then obviously <laughs> came back 
Atkin and did some collaborations recently and toured on the anniversary of my eyes. So, but yeah. 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 Uh, Lauren, did you want to add to that as well? Just if you see things differently, I'm, I'm sure if, if it's like, cause your journey was pretty amazing too, since when you started. Um, seeing, uh, I, I guess you would have to refresh my memory on uh, what the question is. In, in other words, do you, have you ever taken a moment to take a look back at how far you've come? Oh yeah. I, I mean, yeah, there's definitely uh, a lot of growth there. When I look back, uh, sometimes I, uh, I cringe a lot at myself. <laughs> I think that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. But, but then it's, it's okay because I just, yeah, I was learning. I, when I, my first tour ever was with fear factory, you know, direct support for fear factory. Yeah, and, I remember you know, that. 2015. Was, I, yeah. I had a lot of growing to do. And it, so, I mean, I grew up in front of the world and, and that's, that's okay. Yeah. So uh, and I still have a ton of growing to do, you know, I feel like I'm still like blooming into this, you know, I, I still, I really need to be touring all the time. I really want to be out there all the time. Um, so hopefully uh world can open up and, and let that happen. Now, before I let you guys go, now we're going to get to that surprise right now. Okay. So uh, we've been serious. Let's tone it down a bit. All right. If you want to bring buddy here and you can, um, <laughs> now we're going to do something a little fun here called. All right, I'm gonna do this called the lightning round. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go down a list and each of you can answer simultaneously. I don't care, have fun with this. You just have to think quick on your feet. You have to pick one or the other, all right? We're gonna go down the oh, list. Sorry. Some of them are simple. Sorry, Logan, you gonna say something? Pick one or the other, or just say the first thing, say the first answer that comes to our mind. What's the rules of this game here? I don't, I don't quite get it. With I'm going to ask you a question, one or the other, like one or two. You oh. just have to pick one. All right. Okay. Yeah. Some, yeah, yeah. some oh. of them are, some of them are simple and uh -oh. some of them are just downright stupid, but that's the fun part. Okay. Uh -oh. <laughs> Logan's nervous. Come on, man. You've been doing this for so long. You're fine. <laughs> Go ahead. Hit, hit, hit. <laughs> He's like sitting there stretching and like looking over. <laughs> All right. Here we go, man. All right. Let's begin. I'm gonna start you off easy. Let's see. This is just a test run. What's the capital of Canada? Ottawa. Yeah, Montreal? you're from Canada. Yeah. <laughs> that was a test question. Logan's right. He's a Canadian, so I wanted to make sure. All right. Now no, we're gonna start for real. Here we go. Red no, or blue? Okay. Red or blue? Red. Green. <laughs> v okay, vegan or meat? Meat. Both. <laughs> Coffee or tea? Coffee. Coffee. Cats or dogs? Cats. <laughs> and dogs. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. All right. Game of Thrones or Lord of the Rings? Lord, Lord of, of the Rings. Rings. Oh, wow. That was simultaneous. All right. Chinese food or Italian food? Italian food. Uh, Neither. <laughs> she's such a rebel. I love it. All right. Uh, now, this is a debate here in Texas. It, it, I, want, I want to know how you guys say it. Is it pecan pie or pecan pie? I did a record at the, what's it called? In El Paso. Pecan. Oh, it's pecan. Yeah, it is pecan. It's actually, yeah. it's actually a pretty big debate here. So like people would actually say it's some, some people that, said pecan. Uh, you know, the Sonic Ranch <laughs> in El Paso, it's this amazing studio. Yeah, I was actually just in El Paso last summer actually, but yeah. yeah. It's huge pecan orchard, like massive pecan orchard. And then the studios are there and you live there and you stay there for so Holy that's shit. the only reason. otherwise before that it was pecan i've heard i've heard pecan <laughs> Time, times pecan. are changing Stay, stick with the times y'all <laughs> in australia yeah. i've heard right pecan pie. oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i heard that too all right uh <laughs> next question we're moving on this is these are these get ridiculous if the toilet paper roll is really low but not completely out do you replace it or leave it for someone else <laughs> oh wait i'm not I'll, I'll use it till it's gone if it's almost out i'll just like finish it off and... i'm confused <laughs> i was hoping you guys would look at each other and say who would replace it <laughs> so you, oh. okay <laughs> I, I think lauren's confused let's oh. let's let's keep moving <laughs> country or k-pop country k-pop <laughs> How... i mean I, I don't know of any k-pop but <laughs> k-pop's wow. the craze guys like it's been like kind of just like wildfire especially within the last couple of years i mean i know my my sister's been listening to nothing but I, i'm only exposed to k-pop because of uh my sister but it's been i mean it's insane how much of these artists are just kind of just like 
growing out there, but yeah. K-pop. All right, Lauren. I, I don't know. If, I haven't listened to one K-pop song. I don't know why I said well, that. Gundam style would be one that crossed. Is that over. K-pop? Gundam style was is K-pop, right? That's like I don't know. K-pop. That's the first time I ever heard any reference to that, though. It's like the, <laughs> that's funny though. I don't Gundam know style. If that counts. It doesn't. Count. That may that may be something we got to Google after this interview, it, yeah. or anyone who's listening, just Google uh, Gundam style. That's that's a ten year old song, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Halloween or Christmas? Uh, Halloween. Oh, yeah, Halloween. Hall- I, Christmas, not. Nah. Nah. Uh-uh. New York or Chicago? I know you have a Christmas coffee cup, but I'm I sorry. Do. I, I don't right. like how everything's closed I prefer, forever. Listen, I prefer Halloween. I feel like Halloween's kind of like the, like they set, set us up for the rest of the holidays, you know? That's the way to start. But Halloween, that's, that's the way to go. New yeah. York or Chicago? New York. It's one of my favorite cities to play in, and I love that. It's an amazing city. I yeah. love, I love both cities. Is Lauren not going <laughs> to? I like the food in both places. So. Oh, yeah. The food is great. <laughs> okay, so both. All right. Uh, are tomatoes a fruit or a vegetable? I think it's a fruit. I'm That's gonna a go. fruit. I'm going to go with fruit. That's the first time I heard that. I heard people say vegetable. Everybody has said vegetable. So you guys were supposed to say fruit. I, I don't think that I don't know if that's there's a wrong answer to that though. It is it's a fruit. It has I think because it has fructose in it or something. No, I, I don't know. I think it's something to do with uh I don't know what classifies fruit versus yeah, fruit. that's another one. I, see, these are yeah. questions I don't even know. That's all I love asking you. All right. Would you rather lose all your hair or gain 50% more hair? Wait, is gain that a fifty percent tr- more hair? No, not bad. Be a werewolf. Did you say gain 50% more hair or gain, gain 50% more hair? I'll definitely gain 50% more hair. Hell yeah. Yeah, who would well, choose would rather, to lose yeah. all the hair? <laughs> Unless we're talking like well werewolf body hair, I would say yeah, gain. that that's yeah, there you go. All right. I don't want to grow a beard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the life I remember or evolution? Evolution. Evolution. Hell yeah. If Voldemort offered to give you a hug, would you accept? Yes. Yeah. He needs a hug. He does. Yeah, you know, I think we, we'll change his life. We probably won't yeah. get the rest of the movies, but, you know, it'll change <laughs> someone's life. Would you rather be able to speak every language in the world or be able to talk to animals? Animals. animals. Yeah. I've heard people say, well, I can talk to my cats. You got a cat and I can talk to uh, speak every language in the world. So I don't know. That's I mean, I talk to my dog like an idiot, but it's like, <laughs> but still talk to, talk to animals. Animal. We would change the world if we could talk to animals. Very true. All right. We'll talk back and it wouldn't be considered crazy people then. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now there's a, this is the last one. I love this one. There's a time machine in front of you. Each of you. It says the destination is the first concert you've ever attended. Where are you? And what do you remember the most about that day? Whoever wants to go first with this one. Yngwie Malmsteen uh, was, wow. <laughs> yeah, and I remember, I remember all my friends were telling me, yeah, the way he drop kicks picks, they go like super far out in the uh, in the audience. So you're gonna be, I was way in the back, like waiting for one of these picks oh. to be drop picked, and I was so excited. I loved him, so excited. But then, like, it's been like a, this was a lot later than those years where they used to go flying far in the back and he's he was a little bit different these days oh. and he dropped kicked a pick and it, it dropped kicked a pick and it just went to the front row oh. <laughs> were you in the front row no i was in the back like waiting uh, for a pick like this and yeah. it, it was it only went to the front row like oh <laughs> uh, he should have kicked it harder so it would go all but the way over to you i still <laughs> love watching him yeah it's a pretty cool first concert ingbe yeah. cooler than mine i was 10 years old and my friend's older brother took me and my friend to men at work at the greek theater that's awesome Berkeley, that's yeah. that's awesome man that's yeah. that's, cool. a, that's a pretty was, solid yeah. first show yeah it was like on the peak of their first album or maybe their second album just came out and they were like it was huge like five thousand people i didn't out. know that yeah do you that's still have great. the? do you both still have the ticket stubs from those days hell, I, I, hell no <laughs> i might actually uh, I my, my my first concert was uh dimebag uh, seeing him with a uh, damage plan right after when, when damage plan first started, actually, I saw Dimebag two months before he got shot on stage. So wow. that was just crazy how that all happened. But, wow. but, but man, that's, those are the quite, uh, that's the quite, the, I mean, quite the scenario when it goes to time travel. Would you guys, would you guys take that trip though? If you had the option to go back to your first show, would you change anything about it? 
I, I wonder if Lauren would like fight her way up to the front and try to get one of those drop kick picks from Ingwe Malmstein, right? I, I, I mean, yeah. I would. Hell yeah! It's just. Um. I would go back and write "Appetite for Destruction" start to back and Nirvana, never mind, and just you know. He's thought about I would this invent before. the internet. <laughs> You'd answer that so quickly, Logan. I, I love that. And Bitcoin and done. Um, see me on my super yacht, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that that's awesome, man. Guys, uh, this has been an honor. Thank you so much for that. This was a lot of fun. Uh, do you guys have any just last words? Any shout outs? Anything you'd like to plug in or mention as far as Once Human and Scar Weaver before we finish things off here? I don't know if you have a, a touring announcement coming up soon. I'll do what, what you can and cannot say. I would love to see you guys back here in Dallas, obviously, but the floor is yours. Yeah, we look forward to getting back out there. We don't have any tours to announce right today, but mm-hmm. on it, and we should soon. And we're looking forward to seeing everybody in Texas and all over the world as well. Yeah, we got a video coming out uh, tomorrow. tomorrow. Album's coming out the day after that. Yeah, it's the title track, isn't it? Yeah, Scar it Weaver. Yeah, comes. yeah. I'm looking yeah. forward to that. Uh, man, it's nothing but, I mean, it's nothing but, uh, I mean, bigger things for you guys. And I'm really, I'm just really happy to see it's from where you guys started to where you are now. I know I've said that over and over, but as a fan, I'm always a fan first when I have these interviews. It's not even just an interview. It's about having a good conversation with the person who's passionate about what they're doing is what's more important to me. So again, thank you both from the bottom of my heart. You guys stay safe out there in Cali. Um, have a great release. Have a great year. I'll see you guys down the road here in Dallas and hopefully we can do another one of these in person. I miss doing in-person interviews. So, um, so nothing but love for y'all. All right. Stay well, everyone who's listening. This is Logan Mater, Lauren Hart from <laughs> once human, uh, do us a favor, do me a favor, pick up scar Weaver buy the album because the bands can't do it without your help drops this Friday on your music. You can listen to this podcast on all major podcast streams out there. YouTube, check us out our interview on our fire.com guys. Stay well, stay safe. Have a, have a great uh, release time. Um, and I'll see you guys soon. Peace. Thanks. Peace. All Take right. Care. Thanks, guys. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for listening to Interview Under Fire podcast. If you guys liked what you heard, please subscribe and share our channel. And please leave a five-star review as that helps us tremendously. If you'd like to check out more, visit www.interviewunderfire.com or our social media channels on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And finally, we want to thank you all for the support you've been giving us. Keep it burning.